There's the three-wheeled horse trailer. Remember that thing tore up on us on the way home from Wickenburg the other day. Got some new bearings and stuff in the mail. Today's the day we put it back together. What's the plan? Bring the parts over? Yeah. Okay. Riley, find the cotter pin, pull it out of here, and take that nut off, and then start cleaning that up. There'll be a, in that grease somewhere, will be a cotter pin that's holding that nut. Find the cotter pin, pull it out, spin the nut off of there. Then we gotta get these old bearing pieces off of there. They can get welded on there. It might be hard, might not be that hard. Oh, it don't have a cotter pin. You know what it has? It has one of these other goofy things. Oh yeah, they sent us some. It's like that thing right there. That came off fairly easy, didn't it? That inner bearing, I don't know if it's gonna come off that easy. No, nope. way inside, yeah, there. So that's your seal. Well, that's what's left of the old seal. That bearing's probably gonna be stuck on there pretty good. Tap on it a little, see if it'll wiggle. So, uh, we want it to go the other way. It needs to come out, come off. It's harder to hit that way. Maybe get a chisel and a big hammer. We'll see if we can kind of get it to spin and then come. Same thing. Keep it all, keep it all clean right there on your rag. Uh, yeah, that's just part of what bearing burned up. You don't want to chew up that spindle, so be kind of careful. Somehow, maybe get a little knot started in that. See, that's the inside part of that bearing that's burned up. You need to kind of hit it, try to get it to spin a little, and then maybe we can get it to come on. Just don't bang up the spindle. Bang on it for a minute. You go wheel the torch cart over here and maybe we'll heat it. Not every idea we try it turns out to be a success, but we all got that hot. I cut that little bit of a groove in what's left of that bearing. Now we let it cool for just a second, tap on it. Oh yeah, see that's starting to spin? That's actually working like a charm. Sometimes you get lucky. Oh, Riley's trying to find something that fits that grease fitting on the end so we can take it out and have a flat surface and i think we can get that puller to go on there and pull that off that's the one that's on there you tried the one that's on here Took a minute, but we're getting it. I'm 
sometimes you get lucky. Well, we're gonna. That thing ain't gonna work. Start heating it. It's already lighting. Make me a spot to make another little divot. Look how clean that spindle is, that's lucky. So if you remember the night Rio and I were headed home from Wickenburg, I was down there on Interstate 11 and a car pulled up alongside of me, honking and waving and pointing. So we pulled over and this bearing and everything was smoking and hot, but it hadn't come off yet. Lucky for that, we didn't lose the wheel, it didn't run over anybody. And we are able to catch this before it tore up all kinds of stuff. That was a little bit of a pain getting that bearing off, but it was not welded to the spindle. And that spindle's clean and good. We're going to be able to clean it up. And this is going to go back together fairly easy. So whoever you were at 2 o'clock in the morning that chased me down and stopped me, thank you. You saved our day today. Here's the hub, it's been waiting right there. Ever since that fateful night, we'll tear it apart, get new pieces in there. Don't drop it, I'll grab it. Hoo okay, when we were doing the bearings on the water truck a few weeks ago, Steve Medlin had some words of wisdom for us. What was his advice? Don't put in new bearings without putting a new race. So Rio's gonna tap the race out. He also told us to tap the race out with what kind of a punch? Brass. Brass punch. Why are you not using the brass punch then? It's all jacked up. Brass punch, the end of it's kind of mushroomed and he, Rio is having a hard time. But... Coming? Yeah. Go ahead. Got it. Success. Okay, so the outer race comes out like that. Now the inner race, you're gonna flip it and send it the other way. Clean a little of that off and show how scarred that race is, really. See how scarred up that is inside that race. If we put a new set of bearings in that, what's it gonna do to those bearings? Right out and do the same thing you did the other one. Right there. Okay, hold on, make sure you're on the right thing here. Look, no. Farther down. All the way right. To, to right there. There I think is the edge of that inner race. Yeah. Right there. Maybe this is the brass one. Uh you probably have to have that one so you can get it on the edge of it.
be a little careful because we don't want to beat up the inside of the hub where that's supposed to ride. flip it over and beat on it. Keep this, that inner race is what you're moving, heat it. Lots of down, not much to the side. Hit it down hard. This really big hammer seems to be the secret to solving most problems around here. allowed to hit that new race only with that brass punch that that brass punch is softer yeah hit it
boom, boom, push it hard. Yeah, until it finally pops out the top of that. And make sure you do that all the way around. This iPhone that we're filming with went dead on us, and also we had a bunch of cattle to feed, so we took a little break from our new bearings and stuff we're putting in this hub. We got our cattle fed, threw this iPhone on the charger, got it charged up. Now it's just getting dark, so we're going to hustle up and see if we can finish up this project, at least get one thing done today. Where are we at with our project here? Ray, where would you put that one bearing? Did you get that one all packed? Yeah. Okay, if it's all packed, set it down in there and then we'll work on putting that seal in. Not yet. Let's let's get this done first. Is our Yeah, now what can you put on it? It's kind of flat and soft. All right, very gently tap it down. Keep in mind that our videos are not how to videos, we're pretty much inventing it as we go with everything. Except for cow getting. We'll give you a how-to video on the cow getting. And we still want to hear how y'all do it. It's always something you can learn from somebody else. When it comes to all this mechanical work, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell us what we did wrong and how to do it right. Because guaranteed we're going to have to do this again sometime. Okay, so the question with that seal, for somebody that knows... How far down in there is that supposed to go? Just just flush or what? Somebody watching this knows, go ahead and tell us. I'd say go ahead and try to get it down in flush and let's go on with the project. That's good, don't beat it up too much. That's probably good. Okay. That's what we're going to try. If it's wrong, tell us. It looks pretty dang good, though. Where are we at over there with our spindle? Did you guys get it cleaned off? Uh, yeah, there's like some little dirt off this one. Okay, so let's clean it off, put a little grease on it, and then slide this on there. Some dang wires. wires that went to some brakes that are no longer there. Go ahead and cut them off or put them out of the way or whatever. That will do. We need some grease on there now. Yeah, wipe a little grease all on that thing. How much? Just some. I think it's just an extra. Hopefully it's just an extra. As far as I know, there ain't no two seals on that. <laughs> Maybe because you smash the seal half the time if you're not careful putting it in. Maybe they're nice and send us an extra. I don't know. Maybe they knew we were going to screw one up. Last 
Toyota's still sitting there from that U-joint issue. While Riley's packing bearings, I'll show you what we're up against with that. That thing got banged up awful bad and it's not round anymore. You see that, how out of round that is? I thought about trying to hammer on it and fix it and all that. And then I found one online, so it's ordered. I'm just gonna get a new one of those and then we'll be able to put the Toyota back together. Here's that poor kidnapped child's bike. No seat, that'd be comfortable. It had a seat when you guys stole it down at the mailbox. It got modified a little bit from Riley. All right, you got your bearing packed? Yeah. I'm burning daylight here. Now, I think it's an inch and a quarter socket that puts that fancy modified socket I had to take two sockets and extend make myself a deep one I had to cut the middle out of that what size is that inch and a half yeah I think that's the one and try that and this got the feed truck with the light bar and the four-wheeler providing some light for the project here Okay. This side first. Where's your nut? Is it all in this? That should, it should all be in Okay. Make sure you don't drop don't drop those bearings in the dirt now that they got grease on them. That'll be a disaster. You got a washer. And then there's those. Okay. Washer goes first then that little clip thing but they sent us some new ones of those so let's get one of the new ones that's in that box where's the pin okay so some have a pin some have that other thing i don't know if there's a pull. some way to do pull Okay, now. one of the important things, again, this is not a how-to video, but one of the important things about these is getting them the right tight, not too tight. So, one of the things I've heard is to tighten it on down, then back it off. I've heard a half a turn, I've heard a whole turn, I've heard a quarter turn, but I don't know how much to back it off. But I do know this, my dad was an airplane mechanic and uh, he told me that they had trouble sometimes with the landing gear coming off some airplanes after they take off going really fast. Anyway, they learned that they'll run too loose, they'll run without grease. They'll run with too much grease, but they won't run too tight. So I'm always worried about getting it too tight. Somebody, go ahead and give us some internet YouTube advice on that. I'm going to tighten that back down again just make sure that seal set good in the back of there and then we'll back it off and hope for good luck. Uh, tight. Oh, yeah. Or should we do a full turn? More. More, more, more. Right there. Riley's worried it's going to be too loose. Grandpa said they'll run too loose, but they won't run too tight. Alright, we're going to go with that right there. Now, a tab on that little Up to stop 
and all that holds that nut on, so basically all that holds your whole wheel on, is that little spin tab. Alright, what do you think, internet YouTube experts? Is it going to work or not? I hope it's going to work. Alright, Riley, your little grease fitting. What do you think? Yeah, no, maybe so. Pretty dang good to me. Pump that fitting, pump it clear full of grease. Open. Yeah. Okay. Is there? Yeah, I think it's probably good enough. Alright. Those grease caps like you to get them on really straight too. If you try to put them on sideways, they don't like to go on. Dust cap, I guess it is. There you go. Job well done. Thanks to the big hammer. Whew. Now, you know the most important part of finishing a job is cleaning up your tools. Pick up all that stuff, put it all where it goes, then next time you need it, you'll have it. How many hammers does it take? Three, four, five. Got another one there. There you go. That's the secret to getting the job done. Have enough hammers and a big enough hammer. Got it. There's two more hammers that we used. That makes seven. <laughs> 